Creativity is this insanely complex mixture of our past experiences, <laughs> our current surrounding environment, and our subconscious, allowing us to infuse our personality into a piece of work. I want to work out how creativity works in the brain, if there are any health benefits of being creative, and how to build a system to make me more creative in my everyday life. So I wanna bring you along on this journey, and let's see what we can find. Creativity is also leading to some interesting choices. My contention is that creativity now is as important in education as literacy. Creativity. 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 This definition of creativity resonated with me. It involves gathering and recombining information to find novel and original solutions to problems. Take my favourite rapper, for example. The notorious B.I.G. took inspiration from his Jamaican roots with a laid-back conversational delivery. He combined this with incredibly smart rhymes, rhythms, and metaphors to create some of the most catchy music, in my opinion, ever made. These ideas also need to be useful in context. So if you deliver those same lyrics in an essay or poem, they don't work anywhere near as well. You see, you may come up with the most original idea, but utility is where originality becomes creativity. So let's dive a little bit deeper. What's actually going on in the brain when we're being creative? It turns out there's a lot of people asking this question, but it's not really a simple answer. An interesting study placed people into an MRI scanner and then asked them for as many alternative uses as a brick as they could name. Scientists are weird. The more creative answers got more points, so grinding it up and using it as a water filter got you some serious creativity kudos. Creativity involves us drawing from our past experiences while being influenced by the environment around us to combine everything into an original and useful idea. So you can't just do that in one bit of your brain. But instead, the scientists identified three key activities. Mind wandering, selective attention, and filtering. So let's break those down. Firstly, we have mind wandering, and this uses the default network shown here and is ironically active when we're resting. It's associated with daydreaming, recalling memories, and envisioning the future. This ability to wander through thoughts and memories allows for idea generation, and this is why you have your most genius ideas while you're in the shower. Second, we've got selective attention. And this is where the salience network decides which ideas are worth considering or which ones we should just ignore. And finally, we have filtering. And this is where the executive control network evaluates the idea deciding if it's any good or not, basically. And if it's decent, then we'll elaborate on it further. In the most creative people, these three networks were really closely and efficiently linked together, allowing for fast generation, selection, and evaluation of their ideas. So they're not completely sure, but those are some very interesting theories in the creativity field. My creativity process looks a lot like this. It can be disheartening in the process when my videos don't quite look like Vox's videos and I can't explain things quite as well. But each time I finish a film, I get this feeling of fulfillment. I'm learning during this creativity process and that's creating structural changes within my brain where I'm creating new connections and removing others. These changes are called neuroplasticity. Further to that, creativity has been shown in studies to reduce depression, but also had a profound impact on people with dementia, allowing them to tap back into their personalities and sharpen their senses. If you wanna go any further and look at these studies, then I'll drop them in the description down below. So hopefully by this point, we're on the same page. Creativity is pretty good, but also it's not as easy as it sounds to actually be creative. As much as I try to be creative and just stare at my laptop until the creativity comes out, it's not an efficient method and it rarely, rarely works. Instead, a Harvard professor has a much smarter method to try and increase creativity, and that's by entering flow states. Have you ever sat down to do something and then you check the clock and five hours have gone by in what feels like 15 minutes? That's flow. And your complete immersion in the task allows you to focus in 
and switch from conscious to subconscious processing of all of the stimuli around us, making it much, much more efficient. We've all had those moments of self-doubt during our creative endeavors. It turns out that that originates from here. When we enter flow, that area of the brain has less activity, allowing us to silence our inner critic and become more courageous and innovative with our ideas. This, accompanied with an enormous cascade of neurochemicals, boosts our focus, lateral thinking and imagination. This could be a way to find creativity indirectly, through finding flow, instead of sitting and hoping that some creative goodness will come off my intense stare off with my laptop. So how do we actually get into flow? We can't enter flow during any activity. They need to be challenging, require skill, have clear goals and provide immediate feedback. The guy who discovered this idea of flow, I'm not gonna try and pronounce his name, said that there's this constant balancing act between anxiety, where the difficulty level is too high for your skills, and boredom, where the difficulty is too low. When this balance is struck, we enter the four phases. Firstly, we have the struggle phase. We've all been there when you're trying to get work done, but the tension and frustration and stress is just building up. It's not pleasant, but it's an integral part of the cycle. Next, we enter the release phase, where we shift focus from the problem completely. We want to sever the ties with the struggle mindset and shift gears to something completely different. So go make a coffee, relax for a bit, whatever your downtime is. By pivoting and switching gears, we can trigger an important chemical shift within the brain, reducing those dreadful stress hormones. By calming down, we shift from beta brainwaves to alpha the waves associated with daydreaming that allow us to slip from thought to thought without much internal resistance. When we head back to the task, if those conditions that we discussed before are right, then we can enter flow phase. Here we shift from conscious to subconscious processing. And those alpha brain waves we discussed allow for quicker processing and these can shift further, slowing down to theta brain waves. These are associated with rapid eye movement sleep and allow us to transcend our mental boundaries using the imagination that serves us so well in our deepest dreams. As we said before, creativity occurs when new information bumps into old thoughts and then recombines into something completely novel and useful. This is where the synergy between creativity and flow is truly seen. But as you can imagine, this takes a big toll on the central nervous system. That's a lot of hormones and brain activity going on. So that's why one of the most important phases is the recovery phase. This is where our brain rewires and stores the experience, allowing us to retain these newly acquired skills and knowledge, consolidating all of those memories. So that was a pretty deep rabbit hole. <laughs> we started with creativity being the combination of novel and useful ideas. We looked at those three stages of creativity within the brain, of mind wandering, selective attention, and filtering. And we then saw the benefits of creativity and worked through how we can use flow to make us more creative on a daily basis. My name's Jack, and I'm trying to become more efficient at learning and more creative in my everyday life. Sharing all those experiences with you guys so that hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and share some of yours with me. If you like the sound of that, then please subscribe. And drop a comment down below if you've got any ideas of other videos you'd like to see. I was thinking maybe a dive into how coffee works in the brain, but if you've got any better ideas, let me know. Thanks very much for watching, and I would say I'll see you next week, but it's gonna be a busy week, so we'll see. But I will definitely see you soon.